There is so much BS out there when it comes to how to actually be a millionaire. Just think positive, just manifest. You need 17 streams of income. That's how you do it. Just shut the f up. So in today's video, I'm gonna reveal to you what secret traits that you need to have to become a millionaire. And this is the stuff that most influencers are too scared to say because it just simply goes against what society, what our weak, soft society is telling us right now. So I guarantee if you stick around until the end of the video, you are gonna hear things and you're gonna hear a fresh perspective that, you know, maybe isn't that nice. Maybe isn't all roses and fairy tales, but I can tell you for a fact, works and I can tell you for a fact will get you to where you want to get to in life. Now, the first secret millionaire trait, and I have seen this with every single millionaire that I have ever met, including myself. And by the way, this is even more especially true with the billionaire friends that I have. They possess this trait even more, and that is they think that they're special. And in fact, to an extent, they even think that they're better than other people. Now, I know that a lot of you guys may take this the wrong way and you may think, oh, that's terrible to think that, you know, you're better than other people. Now, bear in mind, you're not disrespectful towards other people, but in certain domains, you're better than other people. You think Michael Jordan doesn't look at everyone around him and goes, yeah, I'm better than you guys. Do you think that industry leaders and shakers don't look at themselves and go, yeah, you know, what? I've got something special to me. Now, when it gets dangerous, and I'm sure we all know these people are the ones that think that they are special, but they won't put in the work. The reason you can think you are better than other people is because you have simply put in more hours, more time and more work. So listen, you should absolutely believe you are special. You should absolutely believe that almost to an extent you're better than most other people who are so brain dead, so asleep, are so scared to run towards the things they want in life. So there is absolutely nothing wrong with having these feelings as long as you back it up, because if you don't back it up, then it is simply delusional. And I will be honest with you, there are lots of people, as I said, I'm sure you know lots of people that are extremely delusional. They're like, I'm going to be a billionaire. Cool. Do you have a plan? Do you have any sort of roadmap? In fact, let's put that to the side. Have you even made $10,000 in your life? Have you made $100,000 in your life? So let's not talk about billionaire status yet. So as I said, you never ever want to be delusional in life. We should always have that feeling of being special, of being meant for more in life. You know, I can tell you for a fact, growing up from the age of even six or seven, I just had that feeling that I was destined for more, that something great was going to come out of my life. And that was even from a young age. And I remember even you know, in school at the age of 13 or 14 years old, feeling a sense of like, yeah, I was better than my peers, even though at that time, I hate to use the word bullying, but I was being picked on heavily. I was a complete outcast, a complete outsider within the realm of school. I failed in every single arena you could think of. And yet I still had that feeling of like, no, no, I'm working towards something bigger. I was trying little side hustles and little businesses and this and that. So in life, humility is extremely important and you should be able to assess your life situation and look at your life situation and not be like, as I said, these idiots that are like, oh, I'm going to be a billionaire and they just sit on their ass all day and don't do anything about it. You should feel special. And then you should put in a special amount of work, a special amount of dedication to prove it to the world. And that's exactly what I did. Now, the next secret millionaire trait that you need to possess is you need to develop a high stress tolerance. I tell people time and time and time again, the more than likely most people think they want my life, but they don't really want my life because listen, it's not easy to have 150 employees between multiple various companies managing that with complex, different corporate structures and trusts around the world and investments and family planning and taking care of my mom and my friends and my loved ones and managing that with all the social media, online BS and all the stuff that comes with it. But I've told people the reason that I can deal with it is because I have an extremely high stress tolerance. So I need you to understand don't believe all of this self-help BS that it's just going to be all roses and fairy tales. And if you feel stressed today, take a break, you know, give yourself a break. You deserve a break. You've done no work and you faced your first challenge, your first obstacle, but you know, focus on your mental health. Just, you know, don't push yourself too much. It's absolutely ridiculous. The world we live in, as I said, I like to talk very transparently and openly to people. It will be stressful. It will be painful you will suffer from mental health issues. And that comes with a territory in the same way you cannot expect to be a world class bodybuilder or be a bodybuilder that steps on stage and you say, I want to be a bodybuilder and I want to step on stage. But when I go to the gym, it can't hurt. The second that it hurts, 
I'm gonna take a break because I gotta focus on myself and like, you know, I don't wanna push myself too much. And it's all about like taking care of yourself, you know? If you wanna have that mentality, that is totally fine. You will never get to where you wanna get to in life. And by the way, there's genuinely, and I know I'm, I talk very intense sometimes, there's genuinely nothing wrong with that. I think if you wanna be some billionaire CEO or you just wanna make 30, 40 grand a month, have some sort of online side hustle and surf all day, whatever you wanna do, that is totally cool. As long as it is 100% congruent and honest to your life path and it's something that you choose. I've told people many times when they ask me, I go, listen, I am built for this life because I have an insane stress tolerance, but my life is not the same life that other people should live. But the reason you clicked on this video is because you wanna learn how to become a millionaire. And as I said, if you want to get to that position, you need to increase your ability to handle stress. Now, bear in mind, one thing I will say, it's not something that needs to happen overnight. It's something that progresses. I can handle a certain level of stress in 2023, that I simply couldn't handle in 2018 or 2019. In fact, some of my biggest businesses were the most amount of employees. The reason that I didn't pursue or start those businesses or move forward with those businesses in 2018 or 2019, even though I was given the opportunity to, people wanted to start the businesses with me, give me equity, blah, blah, all this, is because I simply knew that back then, I did not have the stress tolerance to be able to deal with it. So it's not an overnight thing. It's something that you build over time. But as I said, don't come to the first roadblock and think, oh, it's tough. It's not meant to be tough. This is, it's, you know, it's all meant to be roses and fairy tales. I'm just trying to give you very clear expectations. I think when someone can talk to you very openly and honestly and say that, listen, it's not all perfect. I feel like at least you're a little bit more prepared to go into war. So definitely I can say this about myself and definitely I can say this about some of the most successful people I know in any realm in life, by the way, any realm, whether that's sports, whether that's business, whether that's even a high income career working for a very lucrative company, you need to be able to handle a high level of stress and embrace it. The third trait to become a millionaire that simply isn't talked about enough is your charisma and your ability to persuade. Now, of course, everyone knows this, you know, everyone knows it, but people don't place enough emphasis on it. You need to learn how to have charisma. And this is something that you can train, by the way. Bear in mind, most people don't assume this about me. I'm actually naturally an introvert. I like to be alone, I like to chill, but if there's a time and a place where I need to be, I am extremely charismatic because I understand that people like to listen to people who carry themselves in a certain way, who have a certain aura. And as I said, that doesn't mean talking the most. It just means learning charisma. And you need to understand that if you don't learn charisma, if you don't learn persuasion, you will be underpaid and you will be underbooked. So listen, whether you're trying to land a high income career, whether you're trying to sign clients and get business and sign deals as a business owner, or you're trying to be charismatic in order to inspire people to work for you at your company, you need to learn this trait. So real quick guys, before we get into the fourth trait, I get so many requests for Q and A's. You guys want me to answer some of your business questions, answer questions that are specific to you and your career and your life path. YouTube's not really the place for me to do it. And my personal Instagram is just a joke to me. It's just where I post some photo dumps from holidays I go on with my friends. So that's why very recently I started an Instagram called Talk With Eman. And that's where once a week, and I try my best to do it once a week. Don't kill me if it's not every single week, but I try my best. I answer your guys' questions and try to give you some real time business advice. So if you've ever had any questions for me and you wanted me to help you out, go ahead, pull out your phone, type in talk with Eman. You can follow me on there and stay tuned for the next Q and A. As I said, I try to do it once a week. Don't kill me if it doesn't happen. I try my best. Anyways, moving on to the fourth trait. You wanna focus on mastery, not passion. And this is another big thing I've been telling people for years. You know, it's funny, I've started to look at the self-help industry and realize just how much bad it's doing for the world. Like just how astray it's leading people. Trying to tell people, hey, focus on your passion. Let me tell you something, what you're passionate about today, you won't be passionate about in a month. And sometimes your biggest passions in life, when money is involved in it, it doesn't stay a passion anymore. So what you're passionate about today is not what you're gonna be passionate about in 30 years, but what you commit to today, you will still be a master at in 30 years. And let me tell you something, when you are very good at something and you know that, you always enjoy it. You may not be over the moon, passionate, elated about it all the time, but you always enjoy it and respect it. And you always wanna continue doing it because you understand how much blood, sweat and tears went into it. So in life, don't focus on your passions. Find something you're interested in, dedicate yourself to it, focus on being a master at it. Now, once you're a master at it, or once you're very good at it, then you can add some other skills on top of it. And that's really where you sort of 
stack your abilities and stack the portfolio of things that you're very good at. But the main thing is just please stop it with the passion bullshit. The things that you are passionate about should be your hobbies. That's your downtime, that's your off time, because those things can always change. But when it comes to your work, when it comes to your career, focus on something where you hate it for a long time. But it doesn't matter, you stay dedicated to it. This is where I have so much respect for the Japanese culture because I see it time and time again. In Japan, teenagers will come on as apprentices and learn how to make knives, and they will do that for the next 60 years of their life. And I can tell you for a large portion of it, they probably hate it or they find it boring, but it doesn't matter. They find something and they stick to it. They have honor for the craft. And I think that's, that's really what's missing in modern society is everything just needs to feel good and feel positive. No, focus on mastery, not passion. The next secret millionaire trait is you need to have an ego. Now everyone says, oh, ego is bad, this and that. And let me tell you something. I've said it for years. I've said it time and time again. You need to have some sort of faith. I don't care what religion you prescribe to. I don't care what you believe in unless it's atheist. That's just the one thing I have never gotten behind and I don't think I could ever get behind. But pretty much everything else, as long as you know that there is something bigger than yourself and that humbles you and you let life humble you and you put yourself through difficult situations where life continuously humbles you, then your ego will stay in check. But that doesn't mean don't have an ego at all. Ego is what pushes people to excellence. I can tell you something right now. At my companies, the reason that I demand excellence from my team and me is partly ego. I love the fact that I know my team is the sharpest in an industry. I love the fact that when we roll out a new feature at my software company, I'm like, those guys didn't do it. Or you know what? Those guys have been around for six years and we came in in the last two years and completely blew them out the water. And listen, that comes from ego. Think about the best people in any industries in the world. They always tell themselves, hey, whatever you can do, I can do better. And that's not a bad thing at all. As long as they still submit to a higher power, a religion, a belief, whatever it is, as long as they do some sort of prayer, meditation, even just gratitude journaling, just something to humble themselves. And as long as they put themselves through very difficult life situations that, as I said, will humble them, will put them in their place. I get humbled all the time. Yeah, sure. I accomplished a, a fair amount at my age and I understand a lot of people look up to me, but that's why I always put myself in very difficult situations where I know life is going to humble me and I'm going to be put in my place as it should be. So as long as you do that, don't listen to this whole self-help world. Have an ego. It's a good thing. The sixth secret millionaire trait is that they're always thinking what could go wrong. And once again, as I said, it's very different to the whole self-help world because they're always thinking positive affirmation, blah, blah, this, that. No, no, no. One of the biggest reasons that I got to where I am in life is because I do a lot of visualization before bed. But what I visualize, you know, for example, growing up, I never visualized buying a Ferrari or a Rolls Royce or buying my mom a $4 million house in cash. I never visualized those things because I knew that if I do the right actions, those things are going to come and those things have come. I've done all those things. Instead, I visualized the actions, but I focused on it being difficult, what I would do when things got difficult and me getting past that. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you really struggle to wake up in the morning. You visualize getting up when the alarm goes off in the morning, but it's difficult. It's not easy. You prepare yourself for it to be difficult. You prepare yourself to wake up and just be like wanting to hit the snooze button and you have every reason not to get out of bed and you fight with your demons and you still get out of bed. You know why? Because when you wake up in the morning, you only have one chance per day and you might fail. So you're going to have to wait until the next day to do it. But in your mind, which by the way, can't conceive between reality and imagination. That's why visualization, especially before bed, is such a powerful tool. In your mind, you can practice waking up 15 times in your imagination before you wake up the next morning. And you can imagine it being difficult and you trying to convince yourself to stay in bed, but still getting past it. So that, for example, is an exercise in always thinking what could go wrong. So that way you can prepare for things. So even to this day, I'm always thinking what could go wrong. I'm always looking at all of my businesses or my structures or this, that, and I'm always thinking, what could go wrong? I'm thinking, hey, maybe if this partner in this business tries to fuck me over, you know, what do I do in that situation? And it's not negative thinking, it's just preparation. It's always preparing yourself. And this is something that so few people out there talk about, but I can tell you honestly, if you wanna get into the big leagues, these people, and I can definitely tell you that I do it, we're always thinking, what could go wrong? We're always thinking seven steps ahead. And you know what? In an ideal world, nothing goes wrong. And that's great, but at least you've planned these things through. And not only that, it gets your mind thinking. It gets your mind thinking in a different perspective and it forces you to become a problem solver. So if you want to become a millionaire, you always need to think what could go wrong and start formulating solutions for problems that may not even arise yet. Now, the last secret millionaire trait is that they understand achieving success is relatively easy. Staying there and continuing success 
is extremely hard. And as I said, looking around, I always see people go, oh, I'm gonna become successful, blah, blah, this, that. For me, because I've been documenting every step of the journey since I was 15 years old on YouTube, I started my first business when I was 14, but because I've documented every step of the journey and I've kind of outlined exactly what I was gonna do before I did it, I guess it's easy enough for me to say, but I genuinely believe if you stick to something long enough, you will become successful. So for me, that was never really what I focused on. Instead, what I focused on or my mind was really consumed by was how do we stay there? Because as I said, if you manage to make a million dollars, I mean, that's cool, congratulations, but I mean, it's really not that special. If you manage to do it over and over and over and have continued success in an industry or maybe pivot to another industry and flourish in that industry, that is really what the legends are made of. So don't think that, oh, I'm gonna build up my business or build up my career and make a lot of money and then that's it. I can't tell you how many people I've seen get to that position and then they kick up their feet, they get comfortable. And by the way, I know in this video I've talked about, hey, it's good to have an ego and you need to think that you're special and this and that. Those things aren't bad things. Let me tell you what's truly egotistical getting to a position in life and thinking that, okay, I'm good now. That is truly egotistical. You need to understand that once you get to where you want to get to in life, you've just started. Now you got to stay there. And that is the real difficulty. So ladies and gentlemen, I genuinely think you may want to watch this video again. Save it to your watch later and come back to this video in a month. Come back to it in six months, come back to it in a year, because probably the more successful you get, you'll start to realize how true these traits are that I gave you, these seven traits that I just gave you. And you also start to realize how different it is from all of the other self-help BS that's out there. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope that was helpful to you. I say all of this genuinely with love. As I said, I know I'm very intense sometimes, but that's just because I had to figure out all this shit on my own. I had no one to teach me this. And apart from that, as always, I'm watching from afar and I'm genuinely from the ball of my heart rooting for you.